Well, it may have sounded like rawhide, but in my head, I was still hearing barracuda. The inside of your head sounds like a very sad place. But, you know, it is a very sad day, so I'll allow it. After all, today's show is called Where Do Broken Hearts Go? With Jess and BJ. You're asking where broken hearts go? I mean, I don't really go in for all that schmaltzy stuff. You got a broken heart, you ain't gonna be living. You go to the coroner. Oh my god, BJ! Too soon! Too soon. Jess, it's past midnight. We've been here too long. Let's just get the show going. Let's get to the bookie. Hey. I just want to get to... Go! Wrap go the then! Sorry. Okay, so the line yesterday was total number of players in the field. Sorry if I shocked you with this. 335 players. Jess took the optimistic I, over. I did, and I lost. I took the accurate so under. Lost. 295 players signed up, so we missed it by about 40. Not the bookie's best line. Maybe he'll do better today. All right, well, today the subject of our over-under is our chip leader, Matt Jugglestead, uh, who ended the day with 280000 after a run of a lot of hands. He was our club WPT player of the day and told me about some of them. The one that really stood out was the one against Tony Dunst, where he for a uh, uh, raise, re-raise, or bet, raise, re-raise call, and then he turned the wheel and put Tony all in, and, and Tony called, I mean, didn't he almost have it all, and it just didn't work out for Tony, who will still be around to the live stream, I'm just but shocked. Jungle Stats got heaps of time. I'm just shocked he has more than day one, a chip leader finished with 275, I didn't think anybody was going to talk, but yeah, he's got he 290. Did. 280. 280, sorry. And the bookies line, what it, this is how many chips he'll have. How many the, chips he'll have at the end of the play tomorrow, which is we're playing down to at least 36 players. We've got about 120 left. Uh, yeah, in one in the, in the one teens. Uh, and he's got 280 now, and the bookie thinks he's going to finish right. with over under 575. 575,000, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This line, the bookie's on crack, because this line is whack. I'm taking the way under. He's got a more than double his stack. That's just, that's not gonna happen. I mean, he's probably not even gonna survive the day. But if he does, he's, he's probably not gonna have it more than that. I mean... I can't even process what the fuck is wrong with you! What? It's... You really think that 575 is... I, I, I'm not talking about 575. I'm talking about this ridiculous... Dude, I hope we turn a new page and try to make this turn out. What's the, the moment in time. The quicker we get through this, okay, the quicker you can how, say good night. How will I know how he does tomorrow? Because we're reporting on it. That's oh, our job. Fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's your fine. over. Put this stupid iPad away. Ruin everything. Great iPad. It's great. Okay, today was also a day that being in South Florida, we saw a lot of the nationally recognized players we know from South Florida come out to support the hometown. The Mizraki family. Yes, we had two of the four Mizrakis. Yes, we had Michael and we had Donnie, who, even though we know him from the WSOP main event, main coverage, event coverage, uh, this was actually his first WPT event. Not, not the first South Floridian to think, like, you know, Maybe I want to dance with somebody. Tristan Wade played in his first WPT main event today, too. Also kind of a shock. I, I felt I, like he had played WPT. Yeah, he, he said it just scheduling-wise never worked out, but now with all these Florida events, we're hopefully going to see a little bit more of like him. He survived the day with just under 100,000, so he's in good shape. Donnie and Michael Mizraki, not Both as much. Both busted. No Mizraki's left in the tournament. Harrison Gimbel, also from the yes. area and did very well, won a WPT regional event here. But now he's over 21. Ago. So he can't win the guitar that comes for right. the youngsters. But he can now play the WPT events around the country. So yes. good news, bad news. Yeah. Give up the guitar and play more WPT. Oh, one Florida native we forgot to mention, or Florida resident rather, we got to know him and love him in Jacksonville. Mr. Hardy Rodriguez. So technically we didn't forget, we just got to him now. That's not forgetting, that's just... He came out today and he yes. showed up and played and survived the day. He won his entry into Jacksonville and Club WPT, but just paid his own way here. Said, you know what, well, I Well, he paid his own before. way with the money he made at the final right. table of the Jacksonville events. Really great performance. I believe he finished in fifth place. Yes. Took home a nice payday. 55000 or so. Got to parlay that here. And I don't know about you, BJ, but I was glad to see him because Artie, 
I will always love you. He said that he said that we were one of the reasons he came back. He just enjoys us. Right. Well, we enjoyable. We've hit on some of the big name players that survived the day. We should probably point out some of the big name players that didn't survive the day. We had a hard to recognize Tommy Vitas. He had grown a goatee, had longer hair. I didn't cool. know who he was. Yeah, good to see him. Matt Jarvis showed up. Didn't make it through. Uh, Jeff Forrest fired two bullets. Didn't have either work out. Emnon Philippi. WPG ones to watch. Ebony Kenny and Dan O'Brien. Yes, Ryan. yes. A whole lot of people Look, didn't I'm just survive the to day. Point out that we they get ended it. the day with nothing. 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 Yes, that happens. They can't all survive the day. It just DJ, stop. Like, I understand that you don't have a soul and you have trouble processing emotion, but this is, I'm drawing the line here. We're trying to pay tribute to Whitney Houston, and you're just, like, doing everything in your power to turn it into this crass, horrible thing. Why are we, why are we, I didn't even know we were doing a Whitney Houston episode. Why, why are we doing a Whitney Houston episode? BJ, the woman has not even been dead for five hours, and you're sitting here making jokes about crack and death and all sorts of terrible things well, too soon you know what wasn't too soon is you telling me that Whitney Houston died I mean five minutes ago all you had to do was say hey we're about to do a Whitney Houston episode she died I didn't know she died I assumed when I asked you hey let's call the show where do broken hearts go that you assumed since she had just died this was the path we were going down it's Valentine's week. I figured it was on your mind. You didn't notice that it was all over Twitter that people were talking about it at every table? Sorry, but when I'm at work, I have a camera in my hand, not Listening Twitter. to the people talk at every table? Can we please... Look, I under... Let's not... Put it aside, because this woman deserves a nice honoring, and let's end this yes, on does. a pleasant note Whitney Houston. with the question of oh, the day. Whitney Houston. Oh. What is your favorite Whitney Houston song? Okay, well, uh... Don't screw this up. I'm not gonna screw this up. In 1991, she sang the national anthem for the Super Bowl. She did. The Gulf That's War had just started like a week and a half, two weeks earlier. It was a big moment. I joined the Navy that year. It was very patriotic. They played that song, her version of that song, every night. So it's technically not a Whitney Houston song, but loved it. It means a lot to me. I, I get goosebumps when I hear that song. It has extra meaning for me and the best version of that song I've ever heard. That is really sweet. That's actually okay. really cool. So you, what is your favorite Whitney Houston song? Oh, it's not a, as patriotic as yours, but it did, as a kid, it was one of those songs that really, you heard it all the time, you sang it all the time, you thought it was a beautiful song. What? And it was I Have Nothing from the Bodyguard soundtrack because it was just all over the place when I was 10 or 11 years old and it was really popular. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you laughing at the Bodyguard soundtrack? It's only far and away the best no, selling soundtrack I, of all I, time. I'm not laughing at it. I'm just remembering things you don't want to hear. Well, I've heard plenty of things I don't want to hear already today, so we may as well continue really? this track. I was reminiscing about sex I had to the Bodyguard soundtrack. 